The name Ken Shamrock still appears here and there. It is very difficult to overestimate the importance of this fighter for the sport, although Ken himself is not distinguished by modesty. Today we would like to look to the beginning of the story of the legacy of the most dangerous man in the world. We will try to dive into his life, examine him from all sides in order to finally decide, does this fighter deserve all the glory that he has, or is he just a bright figure that showed in his time? We will find out if he was able to be competitive in modern realities and recall many bright fights. Fasten your seatbelts. There will be no stops. The Early Years Kenneth Wayne Kilpatrick, far from his fighting name, was born in February 1964 in Mason, Georgia. It is rather symbolic that he was born at a U.S. Air Force base in Warner Robins. He practically did not see his father, so he did not care much for his surname. A stepfather appeared on the stage who, by all indications, did not care much about the fate of the children. Calling Ken Shamrock an obedient child is pretty hard. Fights became commonplace for him. By the time he first ran away from home at age 10, the prospects were not bright. He was engaged in theft, wandered, got into shelters, and also quickly escaped from there. Over the next three years, Shamrock was constantly on the verge of a juvenile prison. At 13, he got his last chance. A California farming couple, Bob and Dee Dee Shamrock, were ready to take the child into their care. Over the years, the boy's knockout power has reached such a level that his street fights were finished with one blow. It was hard not to notice the craving for sports and Bob Shamrock made two life-changing decisions. First, he adopted a boy when he reached the age of 18, so Ken got the name Shamrock officially. And after that, his father pushed him to go into sports more systematically. Side by side with Ken Shamrock, another future mixed martial arts star, Frank Shamrock grew up. His fate is quite similar, but there was no talk of any dynasty of fighters. The guys did not get along very well, which would later develop into a long-term conflict. We will talk about this some other time. The year 1982 turned out to be a turning point for him. When Ken turned 18, he was focused only on wrestling. But he sustained a very serious neck injury. The doctors were unequivocal in their verdict. Ken was categorically not recommended to engage in any contact sports. Despite the neck injury, however, the guy managed to play American football, go to the gym, work with heavyweights. But time and anabolic steroids helped Shamrock recover. Already at age 19, he participated in the Tough Man Boxing Competition in Reading. There was a catastrophic lack of fighters, and therefore even with his 89 kilograms, he was put against heavyweights. He went through the ranks on two guys, and in the final his opponent refused to go to the fight at all, citing an injury. Ken at first enthusiastically engaged in wrestling, becoming a star in Japan, but realized that he wanted more. His Path to MMA The basic wrestler Ken and his first fight according to the rules of mixed martial arts against the eminent kickboxer Don Nakaya Nielsen. Both are confident in their skills, so there is no fear in the ring. From the moment of this stare-down, the audience rejoices. The show promises to be interesting, and their expectations were fully justified. But the confrontation just did not work out. The very first approach, and Nielsen does not even have time to find the American's head, as he falls into an accurate clinch, which Shamrock drags him to the ground from. Not knowing what to do with this, Nilsson instinctively defends himself. He manages to crawl to the rope, which gives a signal to the judge that the fighters need to be raised to their feet. In those days, that rule was in effect, and it was possibly to avoid strangulation, but one point was deducted from the defender. Ken even overexposed his opponent for a few seconds, as if not believing that he would not be able to finish everything here and now. Again the stance, and again an attempt by Don Nakaya Nielsen to attack the opponent. Now a blow to the body from the knee, 
and the blow reaches his rival, but there was little sense in this. Shamrock easily lowers the exhausted opponent to the ground, where for the next few seconds, he puts all his strength into a choke through the arm. Just a few moments and Nielsen is knocked down. An easy victory for Ken, with minimal damage to him. But even Shamrock's emotion after the fight showed that he found what he was looking for, a real brutal sport. Now he can not only be a champion at home or a wrestling star, he can truly inspire horror. Not only by his appearance, but also by the fights. Adrenaline, unpredictability, and cruelty. That's what the Japanese public wanted and what Ken Shamrock could give them. This is how the Pancrase promotion was born. Ken Shamrock had found his unique way of breaking people with the utmost brutality. Everyone around could only shrug their shoulders as he did not break the rules, or at least did not create complete chaos. Shamrock was at the origin of a new sport, a new promotion. At the very first Pancrase tournament, he clashed with Masakatsu Funaki. It was the same wrestler as Shamrock, but with speed, punching skills, and plasticity in his arsenal. It seemed the first serious rival for Shamrock, the real opposition. The judge examines Shamrock while he glares at the Japanese fighter in front of him. He didn't even seem to blink. If you look at Funaki, his eyes are running around and cannot focus. Apparently, he didn't expect Ken to be that big. The gong and the fight began. Shamrock immediately rushes to the opponent and takes his rightful first blow. A wonderful blow to the body, and Masakatsu even stepped back a little bit. He is trying to keep the American at a distance, as the approach doesn't seem to work. Missed once, and now you're in the clinch with a huge Shamrock. You cannot appreciate its dimensions with your own eyes. The course of the fight changes slightly and Funaki starts to throw blows. Now Ken has to defend himself against combinations from the Japanese fighter. Half a minute of staring at each other and Shamrock again attempts to move the opponent to the ground. He manages to break Funaki and his entire back is now at Ken's disposal. The fighters are not very active but there are moments of explosion when Shamrock tries to perform a submission and Masakatsu resists with all his might. Throwing off Shamrock, or at least attempting to take a rest for a second, does not work for the Japanese fighter, so they would both be spitting on the floor, trying to perform an armbar, but the judge raises them to their feet. It seems that the fight can go all the way this way, but Ken decided not to give up on his tactics. The unsuccessful attempt by the Japanese fighter to take Shamrock to the ground ends fatally by his favorite strangulation through the arm. The grip of the American is what you need, and there you can endure as much as you'd like. But you have to be knocked down and tap. And even though this was not Ken's most colorful fight, it is quite revealing. He proved to everyone, and most importantly to himself, that he is ready to take on new challenges and defeat stylistically uncomfortable opponents. Power beats everything. To understand what kind of fighter Ken Shamrock is, it is also worth showing both confrontations with Kazuo Takahashi. Their first meeting took place according to the rules of wrestling. Takahashi allowed himself to deviate from the script and hit Ken with full force, which is better not to do at all. Ken did not hesitate for a long time and knocked out the opponent with a deadly football kick. Now they were to meet under the auspices of Pancrase. This fight was full of shocking moments. The fight has begun. The silence in the hall is such that it can be cut with a knife. Only blows are heard during exchanges from the fighters. The fighters are in the corner, holding each other back with a clinch. And then the first shock happens. Kazuo throws the American. It is not often that one sees someone could pick up such a mountain like Shamrock and throw him to the ground. Shamrock quickly adapts, however, takes a position behind the back, and looks for an opportunity to punish the presumptuous Japanese fighter. A minute of unsuccessful fuss on the ground, and this Japanese fighter touches the rope. Back in the stance, Takahashi again grasps for an opportunity to throw the opponent and take Shamrock away. He is already bleeding from his nose, and it seems that he is not the sole leader in this fight, but that's for now. The fighters are looking for an opportunity to break each other for a long time. They were even partly outside the ring. The judge raises them again. 
in the stands. Ken recalls that he used to calmly knock people out with one blow. He does a little check-in of the opponent's body with his feet, but Kazuo is not such an easy opponent and will not hand him everything on a silver platter. He tries not to go into a rampage and shows reciprocal activity by counterattacking. By the middle of the fight, they look equally deserving of victory. But then, everything will be clearer. But after then, everything would be clear. Kazuo throws the opponent again, tries to perform a submission, and makes a fatal mistake. Having lost his vigilance and been frankly tired, he himself exposed his head to a submission, and Shamrock doesn't need a special offer. After a few seconds of strangulation, Kazuo reaches the rope, but Ken is in no hurry to unclench the grip, even at the request of the judge. Kazuo loses consciousness. A short break, and the Japanese fighter comes to his senses, and Shamrock first receives a red card and then a yellow card. All this time, Takahashi takes a breath, but this does not save him much. The fight continues. Another failed attempt to end the fight from Shamrock, but the opponent still remembers where the rope is. Again in the stance, and now Ken knocks down the Japanese fighter with his blow. A little more fight in the stance, and now Takahashi himself goes to the canvas after hitting the body. The Japanese fighter would not go down lightly, and at the moment when Shamrock changes position, the vigilant Kazuo makes one last attempt to take the victory. He does his best to twist Ken's heel, but he didn't attack him. Shamrock broke quite a few fighters with this technique and does it now to Kazuo in just a couple of minutes. We saw how Shamrock can turn the tide of a fight and that even at a long distance he is able to dominate, not get tired, to remain cool. It was 93. It was an amazing time, when fighters in Pancrase could fight every month, exhausting themselves. Similarly, Shamrock dealt with several other fighters in the same year. This is Andre van den Utler, who held out for a minute, but as soon as he felt a threat to his leg, he hastened to give up. He realized that Shamrock was not joking with him, and did not want to endure pain, and then an event happened that changed the world of MMA forever the first official UFC tournament, where fighters fought several fights per night. Ken Shamrock just couldn't help but take part. His first opponent on the way to the gold that evening was Patrick Smith. Shamrock was so used to beating tough Japanese fighters that he didn't even feel Smith. He just couldn't resist. A couple of minutes on the ground, and Shamrock performs a leg submission. Pay attention to the referee. He is apparently so happy to referee this fight that he does not follow the situation at all. Ken himself releases the grip when he realizes that the opponent has given up. It doesn't sound like him at all, but that's what Ken Shamrock is all about. He is a fighter, but not a psychopath. The semifinal was against a representative of the glorious Gracie dynasty, masters of jiu-jitsu. Shamrock lost to an opponent who managed to strangle him but doesn't write off Ken. He is talented and energetic, but still immature in the world of MMA and wrestling, while his opponent literally has a predisposition to work on the ground in his veins. But Ken did not despair, returned to his native promotion, and continued to break people's legs. Ryushi Yanagasawa fell under his blow in 1994. Ken was brighter in the stance, skillfully worked on the ground, and when the opportunity arose, he twisted Ryushi's Achilles tendon. He received very serious damage and dropped out of fighting for almost a year. By the time Shamrock was back in the UFC, at the third tournament of the organization, he had already progressed noticeably. To his new opponent, Christoph Leninger, in addition to the pressure in the stance and the incompetent struggle, he showed ground and pound, literally beating the opponent at the cage. Yes, he withstood a full five minutes, but his judo skills were absolutely unuseful in a fight with Ken. And even his judoji could not save him. Ken rushed to the championship. The second fight of the evening and Shamrock's opponent is Felix Mitchell. The fight with him was not easy because Felix had the skills to protect when trying to take him to the ground. So for a long time, the fighters exchanged courtesy blows from the clinch. They hugged the cage for more than three minutes until Mitchell was so tired that Ken easily threw him to the ground. 
Next is a matter of technology. With blows to the head, Shamrock forced the opponent to give up his back and then strangled him. And the final was supposed to be a head, but Shamrock was clearly not ready for it, having received a serious leg injury. Once again, one step away from the title, Shamrock was out of the running. This is what happens when you fight every month. But besides the fights already mentioned, 1994 was marked by his first skirmish with the legendary Boss Rutan. Their first fight lasted several minutes and showed us that Ken's wrestling skills are very impressive. By that point, Boss had lost a few fights to basic wrestlers and he knew it was a skill worth honing. At the same time, he was a kickboxer by profession and very aggressive. The fight promised to be exciting and it turned out to be so for only one reason. Rutan is a tough nut to crack, who, even if he gives up, will definitely not do it immediately. Shamrock dragged his opponent on the canvas in search of his finish line. Yes, Boss was not passive and defended himself as best he could, showing his athleticism, but if you look at his face at certain moments of the fight, you can understand that he is losing control of this fight. Rutan had to save himself several times by holding onto the rope. Shamrock understood this and even tried to pull the restless Dutchman to the middle of the ring. But ultimately, Shamrock found an opportunity to strangle the rising MMA star. The next year, Ken visited another guest from the Netherlands, Leon Van Dyke. He was known for his kickboxing power, but Shamrock could not be taken like that, and he had broken a lot of various fighters. Taking the opponent to the ground over and over again, Ken was just looking for an opportunity to twist his leg, and he found it. And oh, how he twisted it, all of 180 degrees. It's not very pleasant to look at, but fortunately, Leon managed to return to fighting. Looming ahead was a second fight with Rutan, but Boss didn't seem to draw any conclusions from their last encounter. Ken was a champion in Pancras, receiving more and more victories in the UFC. The funny thing here is that Shamrock was able to take his opponent down in just under a minute, with exactly the move that Rutan was preparing for the most, the painful knee lever. Shamrock showed new movements when working on the ground, doing everything filigree accurately and quickly. And in order to continue the glorious tradition of beating his past opponents a second time, a rematch against Hoist Gracie was just around the corner at UFC 5 in the co-main event. Unfortunately, the show did not work out. The fight had a time limit, and it is surprising that in the fight with Ken Shamrock, they had to last until the very end. 35 minutes of dull wallowing on the ground, with rare glimpses of something interesting. And as a result, a draw, which is more likely in favor of Ken. Just look at Gracie's face as they take him out of the arena. The fight was considered a title fight, but because of a draw, no one got the title that evening, and there was no scoring. Otherwise, the results would not have been in favor of the Brazilian. But a new super fight was ahead. The pinnacle of Ken Shamrock's career, a true masterpiece. At UFC 6, Ken Shamrock and Dan Severn clashed in the co-main event of the evening. The scale of this fight is difficult to describe in an actual manner. There are just two absolutely iconic fighters, then and even now. Ken Shamrock against Severn seems still quite immature, all because Severn was a master in wrestling, a recognized star, as well as US Olympic team alternate. Finally, a worthy opponent on earth for Ken. But Shamrock was not afraid, because he had experience in MMA that was much more significant. And you can't win here only by fighting, you need to be a versatile fighter. Everyone was prepared for a real show. In the octagon, Michael Buffer says his catchphrase. The referee gives the go-ahead. The fight has begun. The arena just goes crazy from what is happening in front of their eyes. Two huge fighters, ready to die here in the middle of the octagon and hypnotize each other. Sure thing, the fighters are fighting. Sorry for being repetitious. Ken is aware of who he is fighting. Ken is aware of who he is fighting against, and at the right moment throws a knee strike in order to get out of the clinch. Shamrock finds an opportunity to throw a couple of accurate blows to the jaw, and Severn clearly steps back. 
and now there is no turning back. They continue to fight, but Severn seems to have lost his confidence. He now saw Shamrock as a fighter who wouldn't be broken by this fight. Well, this is only pure gold. In pursuit of an armbar, Severn loses his vigilance. Pushing Ken to the cage, he gives him an opportunity to assess the situation and bring everything to its logical conclusion. A couple of seconds, and now the guillotine brings Dan Severn to his knees. Another moment, and he's knocked out. This is an iconic moment. Ken Shamrock beat not just a wrestler, but a real martial arts elite. He defeated Severn in less than two minutes, becoming the first super fight winner in the UFC. And although this was the peak point of the career of this American, we definitely have not yet told you everything from the life's work of Ken Shamrock. We deliberately kept silent about his future career, about his personal life at his age, about his reputation and lifestyle. And of course, we kept silent about the club that Ken founded, the Lion's Den. You will find out all of this in the next video. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please do not forget to press the like button, leave your comments, and subscribe to the channel. See you as soon as possible in the new video. Take care.